Welcome everybody to The Creative Truth. I'm your host Raz and, and I'm Tyler. And today we're going to talk about how you can increase your prices as a creative professional. Uh, so Tyler, again, we did a poll on the independent Independent Video Creators Network group on Facebook. Yes, yes. Tremendous name. Uh, <laughs> so we, we, did, we did a poll on there. The first poll, uh, the highest responses we got were for how to uh, get more clients. We did an intensive video on that last week, so you can check that out on the last one. This week is the second uh, largest answer on the poll, and it's, uh, you know, how to increase your pricing. And it's something I'm working on now, so, like, all this stuff is fresh in my mind and Tyler's been a coach for me uh, on that um, so Tyler I guess what, what what's your number one thought and then I'll give you what I'm what I'm doing that's helping uh, I think like the most important thing is just having confidence in your in yourself and, and in your work and just recognizing that there's value and uh, rather than elaborating on that a lot that's gonna come up over and over again mm -hmm. so I'll just leave it at that you just have to have confidence in your work and in your abilities as a professional yeah and I, I agree with that wholeheartedly like um i had one client i showed you this video the other day yesterday or two days whatever uh and they like went there worked for an hour and a half put a lot of work in a lot of different edits and they just said you know it's just not that professional uh i just i don't know how to explain it this is what the lady was telling me i don't know how to explain it uh but it's just not that professional uh so like it didn't it didn't necessarily hurt my feelings, but because like I was uh, new and because I was just trying something and I, I didn't I didn't know I'm not at the level I'm at now, even a year later. I didn't know. So it was it's like it messed it messed with me a little bit, you know, so you do have to have confidence. What I'm getting at is you have to have that confidence. And you have to have enough clients and enough things lined up where like one no doesn't stop the show. And then it turns out that I worked for the same client and I had a similar experience. I mean, it worked out, but. I can definitely, you know, it wasn't necessarily your video because I watched it and it mm -hmm. looked great. Um, so it's just that that particular client was, you know, more picky than, than most. Yeah. Yeah. And you're going to run into those. So for those, it's easier to charge more. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, exactly. but you don't know that ahead of time. So, I mean, I guess that's a good reason to, like, get your get your prices up quicker. Yep. You know, so that you're ready. You're prepared. Because you have some clients that are easy. You know, and it's like... So you have some clients that are easy, and if you love, enjoy working with the client, then you can give them a discount then, you know? So you can work, yeah, give them that discount so that you end up working together and build that relationship. That's right. Versus just, like, somebody you don't really want to work for. Mm -hmm. Raise, Raise them up. Raise them up. <laughs> yeah. Um, one thing, I'll tell you a little bit about, like, how I got into wedding businesses and how I basically more than tripled what I charge for those. And that is uh, my first year. I just went in. I'm like, okay, I'm going to charge... Um, I, you know, I think I can charge about a thousand bucks per wedding video and that was just me as a single shooter. So I, I ended up booking a whole bunch of those or I actually shot one for free. And then I used that video to sell six at a thousand dollars a piece. Mm. And then, uh, and then once I did that, I've just every year, every season, every wedding season, I do almost no marketing. I basically raise like I either raise my rates by 50% or a hundred percent every year mm. without fail. Mm. Um, so I went from like nine hundred and fifty dollars to fourteen fifty to nineteen fifty, and then in for twenty going into twenty nineteen, I went to twenty nine fifty mm. as like my starting rate. And I also stopped shooting by myself. So what I did is basically every time I if I delivered a thousand dollar wedding video, I made it look like a fourteen hundred and fifty dollar wedding video. Mm. And if I del if I shot a fourteen fifty wedding video, I delivered the quality of something that would that I could charge 2000 mm -hmm. so that when you're showing your portfolio to the next potential client, uh, the value is there already and, and they can see that, wow, that, you know, it's a good deal for, for what it is. Mm -hmm. So now I, I finally feel like all of the hidden costs and things you don't think about, like the cost of your gear and like your, your taxes and all your business expenses, like you have to, you don't think about those when you're first starting out, but once you, you once you do it for a couple of years and you know what it's like to be an entrepreneur and, and a business owner, you start to realize like, boy, that really is not as much money as I thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, something else I learned from you 
is to, uh, and I mentioned this in the group as well, but to just rent better equipment. Like having really nice equipment makes you feel like you're a better photographer, even if it doesn't matter. You know, like even if I'm just using a, uh, I don't know, a, what's a good what's a good low range camera? If I'm using like a like a Rebel or like a Canon yeah. 60D or something yeah. like that? Yeah, you can still do great work with that. Oh, yeah, even sure. if you just Technically, even if you're just using your cell phone, you can do amazing work with just a cell phone. So, But the client doesn't know that. Right. So, you know, so if it, you can rent a camera for 200 bucks and charge thousands of dollars just because they think that camera is, is worth it and it's going to make the shot better. It's going to make, well, you like know the, what I mean? The dog and pony show or whatever. You mm-hmm. got you to gotta look the part. You got to look the part. Yeah. yeah. Perception is everything. Yeah, and that'll really, give you the like you said. Uh, it might not imp- like if you get a camera that's three times as expensive, it's not going to make the quality of your work three times better. Mm-hmm. But it'll give you the confidence to charge three times as much, right? Kind of thing, right? Right, one hundred percent. Yeah, um, and then uh, I'd say don't discount yourself going into it. Uh, it took me really three years to get my rates up to the point where. I now feel like comfortable around this is what they should cost. I'm not going to keep doubling my rates. Right. Um, because at some point you just find the, um, you know, the market value of, of your product. Uh, so I'd say just do that sooner. Uh, don't waste time, uh, you know, slowly raising your rates. If people are, if you've got more weddings or more gigs or more websites to build or whatever your creative venture is, if you've got more work than you can handle, just raise your rates until all of a sudden people are like a little more hesitant. And you'll actually thank yourself because the people who can't afford the lower end stuff will drop off and they'll just leave the people who are willing to pay uh, the higher price tag for your work. That's right. That's right. And a lot of times they're the better clients because, you know, they trust you. You know, they trust you a little more. They're not... It's just something something about paying a lot of money for something. You feel like it's a better product. They're, yeah, you're committed. Crazy, yeah. Yeah. For sure. Um, I guess the next thing I would say that I... And <laughs> to pony on to that, uh, at 40 bucks was my first podcast editing gig. I was like, when I first started the company, I didn't know. I didn't know any other podcast editors. I didn't do any market research. And I was like, man, can I just sell this? Can I, can this, can I make this dream into a reality? And I was like, okay, I'll edit a show for 40 bucks. Ended up being a very complicated show. It took hours and hours and hours to edit every day. And like, I started getting uh, envious of the client, not envious, but like spiteful a little bit, you know, like wanting, because I didn't set the expectation up front. And now uh, I've been to um, a podcast movement meetup. I've met several of the, several other editors and people in the podcast industry. Uh, which is not big here yet in Savannah, but in other areas it is. But I'm meeting these people, like they're charging three, two, two hundred and fifty, three hundred, three hundred and fifty dollars per episode, which is crazy, mm-hmm. you know. But they're doing to me it's crazy. But they're doing a lot more at the same time. Like they're doing the show notes, the marketing, uploading, editing, recording. So it's worth it. But it just you know it blows my mind that I started at forty, and but other people are making three hundred an episode, you know, or two hundred and fifty an episode. So, you know, do your research, see what the market is, because there are other people doing exactly what you're doing. There are other videographers. You can figure out their prices from their website or by calling them and talking to them or going to a uh, networking event. Uh, There are other um, graphic designers. You know, their work is no better than yours. If they get if they're getting ten thousand dollars for a logo, why are you charging 50? You know, so just their work is no better. Their their hustle is no harder. They, They don't work any harder than you. So just, you know, learn what the market is and then you can feel more confident setting your prices higher. Um, this, is, this is a two, two-parter, two but uh, they're both related and they're both very, very important. Um, one is you're, if you're worried about charging more money, uh, if you don't go into the negotiation, and I'm using finger quotes here, if you don't go into the negotiation or into this uh, dealing and looking at it as a negotiation then and you just know what your prices are then it's not a matter there is no negotiation it's like my video production services cost a thousand bucks for this style video or 250 a podcast or whatever and if that's something that you're interested in 
and you can afford, then great, let's do business together. And if you're not at this time, well, that's okay. Maybe I've got something that's like a lower tier pricing, but but when you are, when you're not sure what your value is and you're not sure what to charge your client and you're doing, oh, maybe I could do this one for 800. If you don't have a good way of really quoting or estimating your job, then you, you're all over the place and like you might feel bad charging more money for this client but no, and then not the other client. So it's just like figure out what your rates are and stick to them and don't negotiate. And even if it's your coworker or your neighbor or your best friend, um, rather than discount the value of your work, just do a little bit of extra. So if your wedding video is $3,000, and a coworker or a friend or a friend of a friend, maybe you can give your friend a hookup, but, but like an acquaintance that you know and like you want to give them a good deal, don't discount the, the price of your product. Instead, figure out what you can do extra to add extra value to, you know, to mm -hmm. what you provide as a, as a deliverable. So like when you go to the dentist's office, and you you end up paying like six thousand dollars for some crowns and a root canal and everything else and you walk out of there with like a, a toothbrush and some toothpaste you're like oh wow i got a free toothbrush <laughs> so you're not you're not thinking about like how much money you you paid because you're like oh i get this free toothbrush this 50 cent piece of plastic yeah you know it's those little things that like people remember yeah so like if like my uncle always said you know under promise over deliver he was a handyman and he would say, I would go into this house and I'd redo the whole bathroom. And as I'm walking out, I'd notice that their handrail mm. was loose. And so I tighten up their, their banister and their stair set. Mm. And then when I when they would refer me to other clients, they'd say, oh, he's, he was such a good handyman. He tightened up our banister. They wouldn't even mention the job he was hired for. <laughs> they mentioned the little thing yeah. that he did that was extra yeah. on top of what was agreed upon because that showed them that he actually cared. Mm-hmm. And so that's so instead of discounting your prices, just know what your rates are, stick to them, don't negotiate, don't even go into it as a negotiation, and then based on your relationship with the person, do extra and 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 do things above and beyond what what is um, agreed upon in the scope of work. Yeah, it's it's all about the experience, right? So it's like wherever restaurant or place you or sporting event or game or whatever you go to in life that you're going to spend money. Like people go to Star Starbucks, not because of the coffee, because it's not that good. They go for the experience of, you know, thinking they're posh, you know, so thinking right. they're better than what, you know, say thinking they're a cool person. They feel like they're cool when they go to Starbucks. That's all it is. And they walk around with a little latte cup. Are you one of those people? No. Okay. Right. Heck no. <laughs> I, the, you know, I said the other day, what's a small called? And they go tall. I'm like, what? The yeah. tall is the small? Okay. Yeah, All yeah right. that's too much. A little yeah. extra. Making up their own language. But that's the experience. Right. That's what people want. People want their own language. You and know? If you understand the, the code, you're you're in. <laughs> you know, you're in the in crowd of the Starbucks <laughs> right. crew. Right. And there's there's a restaurant here in Savannah, um Debbie's Debbie's restaurant. Anyway, it's downtown. It was the restaurant that Jenny from Forrest Gump worked in. Yep. Right? So good people i've interviewed them before but at the end of every meal they give you like a little free dessert that's like just a scoop of ice cream and a mint you know it makes all the difference it makes all the difference like the food was good but you get like a free dessert what like usually, usually that's where they up charge like they'll give you a piece of cake for 10 bucks that cost them 50 mm. cents to make you know yeah but now they switched it so it's like that's what i remember uh even though it's great people that work there even though the owner's really cool and the food's good like i remember the ice cream and the mint you know just because it was free, it was that experience. So exactly what you were saying, like people are gonna be extremely happy with your services no matter what you charge, if you can give them a little different experience, like a little better experience than anyone else. You know, so maybe that's, uh, you know, adding on a rehearsal dinner like you did, or maybe that's adding on- A drone shot. Yeah, a drone shot. Uh, maybe that's, you know, going above and beyond and like doing a, a interview with a family member. Uh, you know, just something extra that nobody else is going to do that they didn't ask you for, but that will really uh, touch them, you know, at the end of the day. Yeah, but that's it for me. Uh, Got another one? My last thing, and it's actually probably like the most important thing, and it's I'll keep it short. 
And that is the importance of raising your rates and the importance of not undercutting uh, your competitors in the market. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, that means basically um, if you're out there basically giving away your service in your market, then customers and clients in your market space will begin to think that video is only worth so much and or photography or web web design you know it's only worth x amount of dollars and they're not going to pay above above that and uh, it just creates this like negative expectation for what something should be worth and really you're not quoting each job based on the amount of hours it takes you're quoting it based on the amount of hours and time and experience it took on the front end to learn the skills to do something that nobody else can do. Mm. So you, you, you should not undervalue that. Um, obviously when you're first starting out and you don't have the portfolio and the connections, you're going to charge less than the market rate, but that's another reason to get your prices up to, up to or above the standard market going rate for, uh, for whatever service or creative venture that you're selling. So it's just like, it's just good for all parties involved. If you're the if you're the cheapest guy in the market and you say, I'll build your website for $300 or whatever, and you get a ton of demand and ton of inquiries, you're not gonna put the time and energy into making these cheap, cheapo websites or um, cheap videos or whatever your creative venture is. And uh, so you're just not going to deliver a good product. So it'd be better for you to charge more money and do a better job and build relationships with your clients. Mm. So get those rates up. Do what you got to do. Value yourself. Be confident. And, and, and value your creative work because it's a very valuable thing that only you can do. What specifically. I'm different than any other videographer out there because my mark is on it and I, I recognize the value in that. Very true. Very true. All right, cool, man. So um, thank you guys for watching today. Uh, I, I guess I, I do have a moment of truth. All I right. Guess. I yeah. was waiting. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's short. Uh, so I guess the moral of the story is just to take the leap, you know, just take the jump. Like you have an idea for a uh, another service you can offer. You have an idea for another business or another market you can go into. You have an idea for an app or a company or service so i mean like just just take the leap just do it you know like look behind us and you know this wood wall like we took the leap and we built this uh ourselves like we went and bought pallets on the, we got free pallets you know broke them down and put them on the wall and now we have a podcast studio we paint it we clean this place out so it's like you just got to take the leap and now i have a lot of energy in the city uh behind the studio like it's a lot of people who are willing to who are ready to support and like we started a meetup group for podcasting we started a facebook group for podcasts in savannah we're going to start a uh, network very soon uh so it's like it's a lot of energy behind that just because we took the leap like nobody told us it was a good idea nobody told us it was a bad idea i just, you know we just felt it in our guts and, and we're trying it and you know why not it might fail in a year or it might succeed but you got to try so you don't live you know so you don't want to die with the regret you know, if I would have waited any longer, I have a kid I just had, uh, you know, my wife just had our third kid. If I would have waited any longer, she would have been in daycare. And my wife would have been like, no, you got to go to work. You can't, you can't start something else. You know, you got to get a job. You can't do nothing else because she's in daycare. Or you got to stay home with her. So so you got you to take the leap when your gut tells you. Otherwise, nothing um, nothing good comes from having regrets in life. And if you're listening to this, uh, this is our first time in our new podcast studio yeah. in Savannah, uh, which which we're calling the Pod Box. That's right. Um, which is probably a good transition into this week's sponsor. Yeah, yeah. So number one is Podcast on the Go. Um, we own a podcasting studio in Savannah called the Pod Box, uh, the first, the only, and best studio podcasting studio in Savannah. Um, we also do podcast launches. We do editing. We uh, also do professional multi-camera live streaming. Podcastonthego.com. Podonthego.com. And the other sponsor for tonight's episode is T Associates. 
Uh, we're a Savannah-based video production company specializing in wedding and corporate video. We can be found on social media at T-Associates or online at www.thetassociates.com. Cool. All right, man. Well, thank you guys for listening as always. Thank you for watching. Uh, we really appreciate you. Please share. Uh, share us, like us. If you if you like any of these episodes and these shows that we're doing, please go to iTunes and rate us. Uh, the Creative Truth and Podcast and iTunes. So thank you guys for watching. Again, I'm Raz. And I'm Tyler. And this has been The Creative Truth. Peace.